Hey guys, welcome to Daddy's Money Garage. Today it's a beautiful Tennessee Saturday and I'm trespassing at a church because what else am I going to do? This video is going to help you out if you have a Panther platform and want to save a little bit of money because a lot of people will take their car to the dealer to have options activated that you can operate yourself and they'll pay money to do it. So I'm going to show you the codes and stuff that you need to operate a few of the things and diagnose one system that you can do without even using a code reader. One of the most frustrating things about picking up one of these cars secondhand is this keypad. A lot of times people don't remember what the keypad code is or it's on its third owner and you don't know what the code is and you can't use it when this, this thing is the most convenient thing about this car. I'm pretty sure actually Ford owns the patent on this thing. That's why nobody else has it. If you don't have the code on the older models pre-04, it's, uh, it's on the passenger side hinge for the trunk. It's a five digit code. On this generation, it's behind the front driver's side door panel. So, you, and I tell you this because in order to do what I'm going to show you at this point, you need the factory code for the car. We know about this keypad. If you put in the factory code, it will unlock the driver's side door. It does more stuff. If you don't know, if you put in the code and then hit the three and four button, it unlocks the back doors. If you hit the five and six button, it pops the trunk. And something that I didn't know is that if you're getting out of the car and you don't you know, wanna hit your remote or some, something to lock the doors or you just don't have it, you can hit the last two buttons and that locks all the doors. So that's pretty neat. I wish somebody told me that when I got this car. I had to figure this all out myself. Something the factory does not tell you is that you can set up to three personal codes to the co to the keypad. And it's very easy to do. Like I said, you need the factory code for this, but if you have it, all you gotta do is put in your, your factory code, hit the one and two button, and then put in whatever code you want. I'm gonna put in, I don't know, six, nine, four, two, zero, and then hit one and two, and that stores the code. And that code does everything that the keypad can. In order to save more than one code, you would, you know, follow the process again, hit one and two, and then we'll just put one, two, three, four, five, and then save the second code under three and four, and that works. So you can do that with up to three codes. If you want to set the third code, you do the same process. You just hit whatever, whichever one of these buttons, and, uh, and it will save it as a third code. Now let's say that you've set three personal codes for three different people to use the car and get into it without giving out the factory code, which never changes. You can't erase that or anything. But you can erase the personal code. So like if, I don't know, you go through some horrible situation with somebody and you don't want them to have access to your car anymore, you can delete the code that you gave them. And this is the process for that. What you do is you enter your factory code, tap the one and two button, and then hold it. The doors will unlock and lock, and that erases every personal code to the car. Easy as that. Something else you may not know about is that these cars are equipped with smart locks. Usually, yours may or may not. Either way, I, I like to call them anti-carjacking locks because they will lock when the car starts moving above like three miles an hour. So we'll see. See, they automatically lock. When, uh, when I got this car, that didn't work. There's a process for turning them on and off, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, we gotta turn the car off. Now, you can turn this feature on with a computer, like, Forescan, like, hook it up, and it would just, you know, you can just turn it on in the computer. But if you don't wanna pay for software, this is how you do it with a combination. First, turn the ignition on, hit the unlock button three times, Turn the ignition to off, hit the unlock button three times, turn the ignition back on, the doors will unlock and lock, letting you know you're in programming mode, then you just hit the unlock button and the lock button again, and that should have accepted the programming. So if I just turn these off, then these should not work anymore. Okay, so just to show that this works, Start the car back up. We'll put it in drive. I've gotten it to where I can go somewhere faster than three miles an hour. I'll get it moving and these should not lock. 
yeah, so that works. Now we gotta turn them back on, and it's the same process to turn them back on. Let's just go back to the shade. Okay, speed run. They should work now. Yep, I did it. Sweet. Now there is one thing that you need for scan for to activate that you can't do with a button combination, and that's to uh, to make it to where every door unlocks when the driver's door unlocks. Now, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but on the front and front passenger and driver's side doors, pulling the handle will unlock the door automatically, but it doesn't work on the back passenger side or the back driver's side you have to manually unlock the doors for them. And considering that you put people you hate in the back seat, you really don't want to do anything extra for them. So you can go in and activate the feature where when you shut the car off and unlock the door, it should unlock all of them. Yeah, and that makes life a lot easier. Unfortunately, like I said, there is no button combination to do that, so you will have to either take it to a dealer to have them op open that function up, or just download Forescan yourself and hook it up to your laptop. It's really cheap. Another Panther platform cheat code is the process of turning on and off the seatbelt chime. How you do that is you take your key, turn it in to the on, to the on position, not run, and then we're going to wait for that seat belt warning light to disappear. It takes about a minute. So we'll come back when that disappears. Once this light turns off, you have 50 seconds to unbuckle and buckle the belt on the seat that you wish to disable the chime for nine times, ending in the unbuckled state. Okay, now it's off. That's nine times. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The airbag light will flash, and then you have 10 seconds to do it one more time. It'll flash to let you know that the command's been accepted, and your seatbelt chime for that seat is turned off. It's also the exact same process to turn it back on, which I'm going to do right now. Something not helpful at all, unless you want to play really mean pranks on somebody that owns one of these cars, is these cars have a fuel pump inertia switch. It basically shuts off the fuel pump. If there's a crash, it rolls if it rolls over or something, it'll shut off the fuel pump. And what you can do is that you can give these cars a real good solid kick in the side and, uh, and it will just shut off the fuel pump, which, you know, that's a nice thing to add. That's probably not a good thing to tell people, is it? If you ever have a fuel pump problem, check to see if this little switch back here has tripped. It's real easy. Sometimes people will like open their door into your car or something and shut off the switch i need to do something about this trunk john we need to finish wiring this thing up one final thing and this will save you money like that this helped me a lot if you have automatic temperature control this module here will display trouble codes if there's ever a problem with the uh, with the ac system and if you have one of these cars then you know that the blend door actuator and mode door actuator like to go out and it's way behind the dash and a complete nightmare to uh, just don't do it you can diagnose these things without taking it to a dealer and paying for a diagnostic fee all you gotta do is turn the car to the on position hit the floor and off buttons at the same time and then hit automatic that sends it into a diagnostic mode and after a few seconds it will either display a code or an all clear signal come on now this thing takes forever Okay, so when this screen comes up, that means that there are no trouble codes, everything's all good. And to return it, reset the computer, you hit defrost, that will clear it, and send it back to normal. If you've ever had a problem with these cars where 
the blind door actuator starts going out and it defaults to heat because that's what it will do sometimes you can just run through the check and it'll reset the computer and it'll start working again i ask me how i know that's just a few of the automotive cheat codes of the ford panther platform uh i believe this works with older generations as well not 100 percent sure don't quote me on it you know read your owner's manual yeah, it, it came with it for a reason i've got to go and get the plymouth ready to go to the franklin drive-in in kentucky now, like and subscribe and all that good stuff so that we can keep bringing you like you know whatever this channel is i guess catch you in the next one